Hi, Bravo and Blazers. Normally, I have a live stream on Fridays for our weekly Bravo updates. However, today we have a special edition of Bravo and Blaze and Cannabis Mom Boss with the one and only Margaret Josephs of the Real Housewives of New Jersey. I want to preface a few things before the interview begins. One, I want to be clear that this is reality television meaning this is for entertainment purposes and it is produced for our viewing pleasure using editing and dramatic effects. There's a whole lot that we do not see. We do not know these people. Yes, we can get passionate, intense, but there's never a reason to cross the line when it comes to attacking any cast members or holding them at a standard where they have to be perfect at all times because we are all human. We all have emotions. We get upset. We make mistakes, but we can also learn and we can also grow. Also, second thing, y'all scare me so bad. Okay. Real Housewives of New Jersey, in my opinion, has the second most toxic fan base of all franchises behind Beverly Hills. So, if during this interview there are some questions that are not answered, please stay tuned. Keep in mind that this show is currently airing, and as a professional courtesy, I would never want to impact the hard work that goes into what Bravo produces, even if I don't always agree with it, all their decisions. <laughs> but. Also, I do not, I, I want to mention that I do not agree with calling out anyone for their cannabis consumption in a negative way on camera, but I also don't think anyone should be attacking people for a TV show either. Two wrongs don't make a right. Um, so to learn from this experience of what happened this week, my recommendation would be to discuss your concerns with someone privately off camera if you do have any. I am not here to be the judge and jury on this argument between Jennifer Aiden and Margaret Josephs. I simply want to use this platform to educate and bring awareness to the true cannabis industry as an extension of health and wellness. At the end of the day, I support other women. I like Bethany. Kidding. But also after you watch this, you will see why I would also like to extend this conversation further and discuss the differences between medical and recreational cannabis consumption. But for now, this is a great starting point. Thank you all for being here. I hope the outcome is that we all walk away with more awareness of cannabis in general. Hi, baby gorgeous. Welcome to Bravo and Please, where we're going to get lit off all the latest going on in the Bravo TV world. This is a safe and uncensored space to discuss our love for everything pop culture and 420 related. So grab your can of goodies and let's get lit. People function better when they're high. Hi, everyone. Welcome to a special edition of Bravo and Blaze and Canvas Mom Boss, a cross-brand podcast edition hosted by me, your girl, Jenny Blaze, with a very special guest, Margaret Josephs of The Real Housewives of New Jersey, who is also a mom boss herself. Thank you so much for being here, Margaret. Jenny, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. You are the first housewife that has been on Bravo and Blaze, so this is really an honor. Oh my God, I'm so excited. <laughs> I popped your cherry, but thank you for having me. I'm so honored to be the first housewife. Oh my gosh, this is great. So the main reason we are here today is to address the topic of cannabis, weed, pot, whatever you want to call it. I personally don't like to use the word marijuana, um, only because in the cannabis community, what I found is that word is kind of frowned on because the oh. origin of that word comes from a derogatory term that was used against Mexican immigrants in the early 1900s, which oh, was- I didn't even know. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it, no, don't, don't worry. I don't judge. I just, I'm, I okay. want to use this opportunity to educate um, any, you. if By anyone way, does cannabis, not know Cannabis, cannabis, cannabis. <laughs> and it sounds nicer. It's easier to get out it does, as right? well. Well, cannabis is the scientific 
term like it's an actual plant and you know they have all the genus and species and the yes. scientific name so that's what it is and actually if you go back to documentation before prohibition because that that period of time when mexican immigrants were coming into the u.s that was one of the catalysts for the politicians to you know initiate the war on drugs and so before that there's a so much documentation where they use cannabis sativa the proper scientific term in medical like journals and things like that so I was blown away when I found this out and it's not common knowledge so no that's not common knowledge and thank you for telling me that I didn't realize that that it was like a (laughs) term I'm going to use the correct terminology no worries I don't judge anyone um on that (laughs) (laughs) for anyone listening or watching who may be new i started bravo and blaze as a way to bridge the gap between mainstream pop culture media and the true cannabis industry as an extension of health and wellness i myself have seen cannabis not only life-changing but also possibly life-saving for myself and others i am currently 276 days california sober meaning i've cut alcohol out of my life Um, And I will include a link to a recent blog post where I explain that if anyone's wondering what the hell I'm talking about. (laughs) So we've seen the topic of cannabis use come up on the show a few times now. And to be honest, we talked about this before, but I'll be honest, Jersey is like my second least favorite housewife franchise and not, not because of you guys at all, no one on the cast, strictly because the fandom is so, can be toxic and well, they're so they're vicious they're hardcore they're passionate um, they're passionate <laughs> okay that was okay that was very um sweet <laughs> listen most of the fans i would say 90 per 92 percent are amazing eight percent are very loud yeah and the eight percent that are very loud are frightening and upsetting and i think that's really what it is so it could really yeah. turn everybody off to what's going on and the show because I think if anybody voices their opinion it just gets very ugly and yeah everybody has their favorite right Jenny everybody has their favorite everybody yeah. has their opinion and I and think I that's think- okay <laughs> right yeah I mean and everybody you know that's why we exist everybody on the show is very different we're yes. a bunch of opinionated women who come from different backgrounds and everybody has their point of view and of course, we're going to argue, we're going to make up. And I, I think while the fans have their different point of view and the way they feel about stuff, but it doesn't have to get so toxic, as you said. Yeah. And I think some people forget that, well, one, you are real people. Yes. <laughs> some people forget that. Two, that it's not okay to threaten someone or to like, just be mean directly to them. Like it's so uncalled for. And people I think have this like false sense of security behind their laptop or their phone or whatever. And it's awful. Like I don't, I don't subscribe to that kind of behavior online. I don't think that it's healthy. I, and I no. think you guys have a hard job. Extremely. I do. Oh, thank you. No, I think we do also. I think there's a lot of people who are behind their computer who have a lot to say. Um, a lot of troll accounts as I'll call it as well. And, and, and who say a lot of things that are unsolicited and then when you call them out or whatever I try to engage in a comical way a lot of times but it, it's unfortunate that it get, it gets yeah. that dark well it must take a toll like I can't imagine so props to anyone respect <laughs> thank you thank you but bottom line the purpose of this interview is to bring awareness to what I consider to be a huge injustice in our country and from speaking to you beforehand I think we're on the same page so we'll get to sure. all of that um however on Thursdays, typically I do a weekly live stream for my Cannabis Mom Boss show. On Thursdays, where I talk about my life as a medical marijuana patient, being a mother of four daughters, leaving my professional corporate career of over of over 15 years, and becoming a full-time stay-at-home mom and entrepreneur. You are a mother and entrepreneur, so essentially yes. you are a mom boss as well. Yes. So if you don't mind, I would love to ask you some questions of around course. being a mom boss. Um, because we support other women. We do. <laughs> all mom bosses. We support all mom bosses and stay at home. Everybody. 
Women yes. have, you know, women are the strongest species. I don't care what anyone says. <laughs> I agree. So this is weird. Okay. I went to go listen to your latest podcast episode, your caviar dreams, tuna fish budget yes. podcast that you do weekly. And for some reason, this has never happened to me before. I got an error message on the first three episodes and I'm like, what the hell is going on? Hey, that's so, so I, weird. And I would have never, it, it works now. It was like some weird fluke which I think was meant to be because the next episode, the fourth one was the one with Taylor Strecker and you guys were talking about manifestation. Yes. And I literally just launched a manifestation framework with Cannabis Mom Boss and with my blog post that I wrote about my reaction to this week's episode, I manifested this right now. <laughs> Oh, I love it. I know. I'm all about manifestation. That That is, that is so crazy. So you were meant to listen to that episode. Yes. I really, truly feel that. Like I'm, I believe in manifestation. Truly. I believe in manifestation also. I feel like I put it out there. I, you know, we see it through, we make it happen. We talk it into existence. It's not like delusion. It's you have to, (laughs) it takes work. But I I do believe that we make things happen and you can manifest it. I mean, there is work behind it, but it definitely, it definitely happens. And I'm all about the manifestation. Yeah. So do you think manifestation played a part in your entrepreneurship journey? I, oh, absolutely. I always thought I was going to be an entrepreneur. I don't think there was no, no, or it's Mm -hmm. not happening in my vocabulary. I think, you know, when I always ask people on uh, Caviar Dreams, Tuna Fish Budget, I say my success is 50% determination, 50% delusion. I think the delusion (laughs) being manifestation, uh, that's the way I describe it to other people because there was never a time I didn't think that I was going to make it happen, that I was going to be successful, that I was going to have my own business. I mean, there were times when I had like two nickels to rub together my business. I started my kitchen table you know, my ex-husband had helped me out, but there, there were times when I was like, oh my God, how are we going to make payroll this week? And things would happen. We had gotten on the O list six times. I would, we would just make things happen. I, I figured it out along the way. And I would just talk things into existence, make it happen. I remember Lexi and I were coming home on a plane ride from Las Vegas. And we said, we just, we just have to get into licensing. That's, that's really going to catapult us into the next stratosphere. We spoke about it on a plane ride coming home from Las Vegas from a trade show that didn't go as planned. A few weeks later, we had another trade show and a licensing agent came over to us and said, you guys should really license. You should license your prints. You should license your brand out. And we're like, oh my God, how did this happen? It just, and right from there, we started licensing. A few weeks later, we got our first licensing deal and it really blew up our company. It's it's pretty crazy. That is crazy. Entrepreneurship is kind of crazy. Like there's so many ups and downs. Oh, for sure. And if anybody thinks it's easy or there's an overnight success, that's not the way it happens. That's just not the way it happens. I agree. So do you have any advice for other women, other mothers who may be thinking about starting entrepreneurship on their own, or maybe they already are and they're experiencing these same things that you're talking about, like those moments where you're, you're like, should I give up? Or, you know, I don't know how to pay the payroll. I think, yes, I, I have my biggest piece of advice is you can't do everything yourself. Truthfully, it's like, I know what you're good at. I'm, but more importantly, know what you're not good at. Yes. Because no one is great at everything. I am, mm-hmm. I always said to Lexi, I'm great as, as a front person. I have amazing creative ideas. I, I suck at the back end. I literally suck at the back end. <laughs> Don't ask me to keep the books. I have to hire someone to do that. I am very disorganized. I am not great at the paperwork. I think you have to have a good team behind you. If you can't afford a good team, you know, have them give up some sweat equity. Mm-hmm. I just feel like it, it's very important for that. When I started my company, there was no social media. There was like Facebook had was out, but there was no Instagram. There was nothing mm-hmm. like that. I actually think it's almost easier to start a business now. I agree Sometimes with you. To start a business now. I mean, anybody can start a business on Instagram. I thought of a, I yes. met with someone yesterday. I was like, this is the way you put together your company. I think I could give somebody 
the cliff notes on how to start a business. It's about great branding, uh, great photography. I mean, there is like literally minimal investment. You have to see mm -hmm. a void in the marketplace for whatever it is. Uh, and then just get, you can open a, literally a shop on Instagram. It's, it's much mm -hmm. easier and just have amazing social media presence and, and start there. Oh my gosh. Yes. That's basically how I started. I know I really, it's, it's, it's unbelievable what, what people you could achieve at this point in life. I think it's actually easier now to start a business. Yeah. Well, I think it's because we have more accessibility to technology. I mean, back, I remember when I was in college, we didn't, I studied information technology, electronic media, arts and communications. And like you said, there was no social media back then. Now no. it's like, oh my gosh, there's so much you can do with the technology that's available. So Yes. I and I think that's, a, yeah. So if you, you know, I think you get, you could get an intern to help you with your social media, mm -hmm. someone who's looking for something for their resume. I, it's literally, I think I say now is the time to start a business. Yes. I for agree. Anybody who wants to now is the time. Oh my God. I love that. So do you offer mentoring, coaching classes? I feel like you have so much to offer and you have the ability to empower so many I, women. It's, I do mentor the young women that I do have a few young women that work for me. I give so much advice. It's funny. I am much more accessible, which I probably should not tell people because um, so many people do reach out to me and say, Marge, could you help me with this? Could you help me with that? <clears throat> Lexi and I should really give a class on branding because yes. we've done amazing brand decks for friends. We've done people's book covers. We are fabulous at it and we really should do a class on it. If you look at my website for drinksoiree.com, we designed mm -hmm. the whole website ourselves. Our brand deck is phenomenal. Uh, we probably should do that, but we give it away for free half the time, which we should probably stop doing. But we want to help everybody. There's room for everybody to shine and sparkle and there really is room for everybody. And I feel like it, it's important to lift everyone else up. As the funny yes. part is the people who I really want to take my advice that don't always take my advice. I'm like, Same. listen to me. <laughs> don't you hate that? <laughs> I know exactly um, what you're talking about. Yeah. As a consultant for 15, over 15 years, that's pretty much what it is. And a lot of it is the mindset change and the holding of the hand and, you know, walking them through, like coaching them, like it is going to be okay. We're going to make this change. But, you know, there's like a whole grief process. There's a whole psychological thing that people go through when they have to make a significant change. So I, I find and, it fascinating. And, it, and it's, yeah, and it's, some things are just baby steps, but some things are just so, I think, Jane, it's, some things are just so obvious to you and I, because we've been in it for so long. That's not obvious to everybody. So yeah. I have to learn sometimes not to get frustrated. I'm like, oh my God, you didn't do this. And it, it, to me, you know, but things are second nature to me yeah. or you. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. And we have to well, teach up. Yeah, absolutely. But let's move on to the original reason why we are yes, here. Yes. In this week's episode, you and another castmate get into an argument. Yeah. Um, you approached her to clear the air with her. And I did have a question because I thought there was another castmate who was kind of involved in the situation or at least like- yeah, Yes, and I did question her as well. I guess okay. I addressed. Yeah, of course, that is not like me. Okay. So when you approached your castmate, it seemed like you were upset that you had a former friend who was seeking out your castmates to talk about you. Is yes. it- accurate to say that if that is true what happened that that is hurtful to you thinking that they are your friends and they are doing this without telling you or what um, is the I'll, part I'll just I'll, I'll tell you I'll tell you exactly what happened um this happened in and this is I've said this another podcast so I'll just say the truth which is the truth which I always say and <laughs> I could prove it and it'll, it'll be proven mm -hmm. again over and over. This happened February 27th, 2022. Okay. Which is before last reunion. Okay. Okay. Wait, um, the, what, what happened? The, the meeting, the, the meeting of the friends. Oh. And Teresa and Jennifer. 
Oh, so you this didn't know at, at the reunion. I did know. I oh, knew. Oh, you did know. Okay. Reunion. It happened February 27th of 2022. Oh. Okay. I have it because I found out immediately. Nothing, nothing is, people who know me know there's one thing. I'm not a secretive person. I am mm -hmm. very upfront. I don't make secret meetings. They could say I dig everything. People try to throw things on me because I am very strong and very upfront about it. So of course I thought Jennifer and I, I, when I make up with someone, I really make up with someone. So yeah. I, I made, I, I made up to me. I thought that was a heartfelt makeup. Yeah, it seemed well, like it. When I was there, we were at reunion. I was empathetic. I was, you know, I felt bad yeah. for her about what she went through. Mm -hmm. What she went through as a woman. Yeah. I think there was a lot of, she was, I, I'm, I still stand by, I think she has hypocritical behavior on a regular basis, but that doesn't mean I'm not empathetic and feel bad for her. And I felt we had a genuine makeup. Teresa and I did not leave the reunion great. So I kind of understood her craziness, okay? Um, when I found out that a former friend who I had tried to get on the show for two years in a row, who I know for a long time and who had tried out for the show two years in a row and I could not get her on, uh -oh. would audition for the show, uh, went to them because she was very upset with me and Jennifer will say it. Um, she was not talking to me because I uh, disinvited her to Christmas because I was irritated with her. Um, for numerous reasons, which just friend bullshit because, because of the show, because I couldn't get her on. And she was accusing oh, me wow. of not getting her on. Um, she had wow. went to them thinking causing drama, they would get her on going to the people who hated me the most. Oh, like Angie Harrington and on Salt Lake city. Do you watch? I guess, Netflix? I guess that's what it was, but this is what the problem is. I thought I was made up with Jennifer, whatever it is. Yeah. So when I found this out, it was before last reunion. We, they brought it up to me. You know, I confronted them at the last, you know, in between last reunion, Jennifer was trying to bring it up. Of course, it wasn't relevant there. Melissa and I confronted her. Melissa spoke to her about it on the, we all, yeah, we all discussed it already. So when they had brought it to the show, I said to Jennifer, I thought we were made up. I thought everything was okay. Why are you doing this? That's very disingenuous to me. So is it that she she didn't tell you beforehand? She just went and did that? Like, would if she told you, hey, your friend is trying to meet with me, just that so you know. That would have been fine. That would have been fine. Okay. So it's more like you feel like you, it was not fully transparent and that was her yeah, There's no, tra the whole point is she she was still revengeful towards me. My, the friend, it really speaks more about her, what she did mm -hmm. and that Jennifer and I had already spoken about it back in February. And mm -hmm. she still decided months later when we were together in June filming that she thought it was necessary to bring all this drama to the show. So then it seemed like she wasn't understanding your point of view of like how this could be hurtful to you. And then in response, you, it seemed like you were out of frustration. You said there was more the conversation. Marijuana. There was Paranoid. more conversation about other things. There was more conversation about other things when she, to me, you know, and I don't want to make it about her as much. Yeah. I have a very personal relationship with her. I know her behavior. She knows my behaviors. I know when she's not herself. And the truth is to me, she, and it's, I'm, I'm not trying to discredit her or her behavior. I know when she's not totally present. I'm just going to leave right. it at that. Um, and and the, that conversation, you saw a microsecond, which is fine, which is fine. It was going on quite a while of numerous okay. topics and not um, connecting. Right. And that's why I made that comment. So you truly Based feel on like- her behavior. Okay, so you truly felt like in that moment, because of her behavior in that moment, you you did say or, or yes, yeah, you, you have marijuana paranoia, right? Yes. Okay. And by the way, that is a thing that there yes, is a thing called marijuana is. paranoia. Certain mm -hmm. people um, can get that when they yep. 
smoke excessively, take gummies excessively. There, there is a thing I've seen it in my other good friends yeah. and they have to change what they're taking or whatever. And I was like, absolutely. This mm-hmm. is what's going on here. It's very frustrating. I'm pissed off. I, yes. I cannot connect the dots. I'm having a, you know, it's so <laughs> frustrating. Like cut the shit in marijuana paranoia. And I, I get wasn't, it. That's what it was. Okay. Like, and that's fine. I just want to make sure and clear the air because obviously you're on a show and they edit it a certain way to make it look like you're like out of left field, just saying like, you're, you're saying she has marijuana paranoia because you know, she consumes cannabis. No. And I don't care that she consumes cannabis. You know what I mean? There's, there's ever anything. I am not against the use of cannabis. I'm not against her using cannabis. I'm not against me, you know, sometimes taking it. I'm not against anybody using cannabis at all. The proper use of cannabis. There's misuse of everything. You know that as well as I do. Right. Oh, I agree. (laughs) Medicinal, medicinal use cannabis. Amazing. It helps people so much. I, my step, you know, I call her my stepmother, my mother's first boyfriend, um, his wife. I always say, oh my God, you have to take it medically. I got her. I helped her get a medical marijuana. I just, it's so important for so many, for so many people. And it has so many medical benefits. I agree. People use it recreationally, of course, but just like anything else, like alcohol, like, you know, sugar, like we said, like caffeine, anything too much of a good thing is just too much. I agree. And I did have a licensed substance abuse counselor on my show last year to talk about this topic, about what does it mean to be addicted to something? Because you could be addicted to exercise or something, you know, like what does that definition mean? And then also, what does sobriety mean? And what is the difference between medical use versus recreational? Because for example, I myself, I feel like I use cannabis medicinally. And I've been able to wean off of other prescription medications by microdosing. And I feel that my life, my wellness in general has, is elevated beyond, like, I just feel so much better. And there aren't like the most negative side effect I have is like my mouth gets dry, but I smoked right before (laughs) we met and we can- but you're, have a conversation. So you're, we can have a conversation. You're lucid. You're amazingly present. This is a different experience. Okay. You have a different experience than what I experienced with some I people in my life. Okay. I don't want to name any names, but some, this is a totally different experience. I get that you. Okay. I was experiencing when I said that comment and yes. I, it was out of frustration. And that's what was, I was experiencing at that time. Yes. My one comment is just based on an individual experience. Yes. Just listen, gotcha. I made other comments about, I've called someone a sloppy drunk before. I am not against alcohol consumption. Do you understand? It's just, yeah. and it's, not even being, it's about that moment at that time of what I'm, you know, a one-on-one relationship, what we're experiencing. I, you know, and when I saw what had happened, you're like, and you know, people were so upset. I was like, oh God, you, you know, cause <laughs> it's just, because I see so much of the benefit and everything else. It's just like, just like that thing. It, it, it was, it's in that moment. And I, and I know there's so many good uses and it's, there are just like we just said with anything, it, there's a time, a place a, and moderation and, and what works for the person. And that's really what it was. And I, you know, I, I wasn't like a whole counseling session. We were in an argument. <laughs> it was a frustration. Yeah, um, I could tell. Do you think maybe if you expressed why you were hurt that it could have maybe de-escalated? I, I believe me, I, 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 I expressed it. Oh, they, and do they, you feel they, like she wasn't, she wasn't receptive to it? I said, I thought we made up. I mean, I think they, they cut to the chase, you know, to try and cut to the point. I thought we made up. I thought we were okay. I felt it was disingenuine. You met with someone behind my back to to dig. Can you just say you fucked up? Could you just, and she's like, no, I think I did nothing wrong. We're not friends. There's a spectrum. There's this, you know, and I was like, you know, and then there was other conversation and I was, you know, it was going in circles and it, it was yeah. going for a while. And it, you know, it's just, that would hurt my feelings. I, I agree. I think, like I understand you know, your side. 
I feel I very, it's not even my, my fans, are, but it's also just like, I don't do anything for show. I don't do anything to shut people up. I do things from the heart. So it's just like, shame on me for thinking everything was okay because I advocated for her. I texted her during the season. I, I did. I felt bad for her, you know, when I watched back this season, cause I, I saw she was really hurting. Yeah. You know, emotionally you, from it. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I mean, but I feel no one, for both of you. I mean, it's you know what, but when no one sees their part at all, Mm-hmm. that's I I have no tolerance I I'm going to be honest that's something I cannot tolerate I'm very black and white that if you cannot see your part in anything and cannot be self-reflective I I can't that's a very hard relationship for me to be in as a friend partner in anything any relationship any, ro- any relationship. relationship yeah I yeah that. business anything self-reflection yeah. goes very far with me and I feel that's, you know, that's a, just not for me. You feel that that may be lacking on the yeah, other side. Yeah, you know, I think it's very hard to be on a show or with anything. And I think in that moment, that's really what it was. I think, so I think, you know, that was a frustration thing. And I think everyone's like, oh, you know, they took that comment at a, you know, whatever context. Yeah, I think just, the like my I have two different generations of children I have Gen Z and then I have Generation Alpha like I didn't even know yes. that was an, a new what generation. is that what, what's Generation Alpha how old is that well my kid my youngest are two and four but oh my god I, so cute yeah. <laughs> and then I have a 13 year old and then my stepdaughter's 18 so they're Gen Z's and it's just I see how different things are from when even when my 13 year old was a young child to like now with my toddlers I wouldn't have even thought about smoking weed as a mother when I had my 13 year old but now I'm trying to change the stigma and I'm trying to be more open about it because I do believe that it is beneficial and I think that you know with media it's been frowned upon for so long like we have that old Cheech and Chong (laughs) stereotype where you're like you're a lazy person or you're not a good citizen or no and I don't I don't you know and that's not the case at all I think it's very it, it should not be stigmatized but I do think there's a time and a place for everything I think there's medicinal there's medicinal and there's recreational yeah and, and it's hard to say who's doing which one really who's doing which well I think because <laughs> no, it's really I, the same thing the actual you know no cannabis. I know but people are using it for different reasons right sometimes yeah. I think mm-hmm. recreational you go overboard before we say goodbye I want to thank you for being here today to clear the air on this topic I'm sorry I titled my blog post that you declared war on the cannabis community <laughs> and can- never, never no I was obviously <laughs> I was obviously being dramatic. I mean, it's that's okay. Kind of like this you is know. what the media and I'm used to it's about, right? Yeah. I love, I love a good drama. <laughs> no, 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 never. And I, and I just want to add in that we had Frank here, who has a cannabis business. Yeah, and Joe does. and I are very supportive of Frank and his business. And we had an event here for Frank at our home. So that. yes, that's I great. Love it. For everyone who is listening and watching, I please urge you all to. Be cautious with your words that you use and to educate yourself on the science of cannabis and all plant medicines, the physical and mental health benefits, the history of the war on drugs and evolving legislation in your local area. There are a lot of detrimental consequences that we've seen from the war on drugs and prohibition. We've seen people, their lives have been ruined. They go to jail. um, Horrible. That is they lose their jobs they lose their children there are still women parents out there in this country that are still losing their children today i mean that is disgusting that is disgusting yeah it's awful it's awful yeah it is unfortunate i mean thankfully in i just interviewed trolley patel who is a professor at records uh cannabis law and she also is um, the founder of Blaze Law Firm and Blaze Responsibly, a nonprofit organization to help 
you know, modernize the stigma, similar to me. And luckily in 2022, New York and in New Jersey, they both passed a law where child protective services or agencies are no longer allowed to remove children from parents' homes based solely on THC. And in Arizona, there's a new law where pregnant women are no longer you know, harassed or threatened by child protective services if they consume during pregnancy. Just as a disclaimer, I do not condone the use of cannabis during pregnancy unless directed by a physician. And this is not medical advice here on this show. Yeah, um, yeah. But thank you so much, Margaret, for oh, being thanks here. Thanks for having me on. I, we, we cleared the air and I'm not going to use the word marijuana anymore. I'm going to use the word cannabis. <laughs> Yay! Moving forward, that was that was the good thing, and I also want to say it's like I was the first woman on Jersey who brought THC on the the pop yes. plus, like the yeah, pop so you, plus. We gotta look up that product. Does that product still Euphoria, exist? Euphoria. Well, I want to make sure that I say, don't forget to check out the Cannabis Mom Boss Manifestation Framework. The link is in the show notes, and tune in live every Friday at 12 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook, or check out the audio replay on Apple, Spotify, Anchor. Google Podcast, Stitcher, and iHeartRadio. Also, don't forget to check out drinksoiree.com. That is Margaret jo Joseph's new cocktail, mocktail. mocktail yes, that you're new releasing. Non alcoholic you mocktail. Drinksoiree.com. Oh, I got to show it. Um, oh my God, I'm not even showing it correctly. Something's <laughs> severely wrong with me. Drink Soiree, non alcoholic mocktail, 45 calories, yeah. all natural. Drink or spike as you like. Oh my gosh, I love that. I just wanted to show you quickly. Look. Oh, it's a, it's yes. Fabulous. Soiree. What are They're the flavors? flavors? This one's Cool Breeze, Cucumber, Elderflower, Lychee, and Mint. Oh, my gosh. This is That's passion, amazing. Rose and Guava. We, um, the, the coconut ones on here, it's coconut, pineapple, um, lemongrass, and ginger. This one's Ooh. watermelon, basil. Oh, my gosh. I love it. Yeah, they're Those great. Those flavors sound amazing. Yeah, and they're like oh low gosh. in sugar, like nine grams, uh, less than nine grams of sugar and only 45 calories and all real juice, vegan, that. you know, the whole thing. Oh.